Hey all, Simone here. I am in the mountains now. I just got to Tahoe yesterday where I'll spend my next month and it's beautiful here, although you wouldn't believe it if I told you there are mountains and mountains of snow still all around me. But this week has been an interesting one because I've been talking to a lot of people who've just been having a lot of conversations around system strategies, system strategies, and everybody hoping that those are the things that are going to be the winning thing to take their company to the next level. And while we need really good systems and strategies, they only really work if you have the right people working with them, right? So the only way to really exponentially increase your revenue is through teams. So you want to get the right people on the bus in the right seats so that they can help you take this thing to the next level. And so you need the inspired team and you need the great leadership that you're going to provide with the right systems. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, if you don't have those other people helping you with everything, it'll be all up to you. It'll be up to you to control it all. It'll be all up to you to make the right decisions. And it'll be all up to you to tell them every single little thing. And they're going to be bored to tears and not terribly inspired about that. So we really want to make sure that we get this right. Otherwise, you lose control, you lose tons of money and time and momentum. And here's a really crazy number. Did you know that it is about 15 times? So one mishire, one person who's not in the right spot, who doesn't have the right direction, doesn't have the right support from you, costs you 15 times what they make in a year. So you got to think about that. If somebody in the, on your team makes $100,000, if you don't support them right, it'll cost you a million and a half over time, over one year, right? So that's pretty crazy stuff. So when I hear people tell me that they are going to get to that team thing down the line once they have their product dialed in and the rest of their company is running great, I feel sad for them because I know it's not going to go well. I know that they're going to be spinning their wheels and that they're not going to get where they want to get. So you might be wondering, okay, so how do I get that amazing, inspired team that's going to take my company to the next level? And it's really, I'm going to call it your A-team. You need to hire that A-team. So, hey, Dan, nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. So the A team really has a lot to do with who's on it. And then, so you hire for it. And then the next thing is you're going to have to look at who's on your team already and make some tough decisions around that. You have to get really honest with yourself around that. And then the next thing that's even more scary is now you have, you've hired this A team, you have top graded your IT, A team that you already have. Now you have to lead that A team and that means you have to be amazing at it because it doesn't really work if you have these amazing people who are working with you and you're a dud <laughs> at getting them across the line. So all those things have to really work together. So how do I hire for them? You have to have the right, pe the right systems in place to hire for that A team. So we think about the, the same analogy again, get the right people on the bus and then put them in the right seats. And then you have to have a planning system that's really going to help define for them what that right seat is and how they can be impactful and how they can really take your company to the next level. So a lot about it is setting you the, the expectations right. And it's not just the expectations from you to them, we'll come to that later, but it's also what they expect from you. It's a really big piece. So that's about getting the new people on the bus, but then your existing people. And this is where a lot of startups have so much trouble because I know you might have hired people who were willing to give you their time when you didn't have a whole lot of money or, you know, your friend, your cousin, your sister is working for you because they had a skill set that sounded great. And overall, it may have been just a decision to get a body in a place where you really needed an A player. So now you're stuck because you have this team and you're all buddy buddies and you don't really want to rock the boat, but that's what you really have to do. You have to rock the boat. And here's why. You can't afford not to. 
because this is what's going to happen if you don't really look at your team and start top grading them and I'll talk in a second about what that means that means you're going to be bringing along dead weight when you need to sprint. So how can you sprint when you have a ball and chain attached to your leg? And that's kind of how it is when you have a team that's not optimized. So super important that you pay attention to that. So this may, when we talk about top grading, it's a very great proven system that may sound harsh, but what it basically means is 20% of the people on your team are probably already A players. They're executing right on your amazing direction. You guys are playing well together. You're optimized, you're aligned, and you can take this thing to the next level. Now and then there's 60% of your people who are probably on the right way, but they might need some help. They might need you to step it up as a leader so that you can help them grow and you can support them in the right way so that they can become a player. So you have to help them up level, right? So that's, so that's 20% of your team that's already good, 60% of your team that needs your help, and then 20, the other 20% are probably not the right fit. So when we grade our people on our team, how do we do it? We look at it in four different ways and it's can do, will do, team fit, and company need. And anybody, when you look at that bottom 20%, it's very likely that they will at least not fit one of those categories. And if anybody on your team doesn't fit all four of those categories, they're not A players. So you have to really be honest with yourself and um, think about you know where where they might fit better. Sometimes it's just about bringing them into another seat on the bus, and sometimes it's really in their best interest and in your best interest to get them off the bus. So think about that idea. First, you hire the right people. Then you look at your existing team and top grade them. And then the third thing is you have to become that A plus leader. So you're not managing people at this point. You are growing people. And so your question always with your team should be, how can I unblock you? How can I support you? How can I help you grow into this level that you can take everything that you're doing and take it up another notch? So that's really your function as a leader. So then you have to think about this other thing as in your culture, and that's another important thing because when you have a team of eight players, you can't just have a random culture. So this is really important because say your team is kind of so-so and your culture is kind of less than so-so. You haven't really paid a whole lot of attention to it, attention to it because what you've been doing is you've been building this thing that's amazing or that's gonna be amazing. So culture has kind of gotten the short end of the stick. And some people say to me, hey, you know what? I don't really have a culture. Well, guess what, buddy? You have a culture whether you believe it or not. And most of the time, if you don't do anything about it, it's gonna be a crappy one. So when you have a team of eight players, they expect an environment where they can succeed. So that means you have to take care of your culture. And eight players expect a culture of discipline because they are in it to win it. They don't accept anything less and you have to provide that for them. You have to provide the container for them. They can actually, they can take care of it but you have to make sure that you help them set it up right or that you have set it up right for them to start with. So what does that mean, this culture of discipline? It means a culture of extreme ownership. When you have an A player, they don't, ex failure is not an option. They are in it to win it, like I said, and they absolutely need you to support them in that. So it's a really big deal when you think about how you help people be on their best. So they will do everything they can to do their best, but they rely on you to give them feedback and to give them that feedback consistently and regularly so that they don't, don't waste their time going down, down a route that isn't really gonna work for you, right? So consistent and regular and honest feedback is super important. So. You have to be really willing to set those standards and then hold them to the standards. They want to, they're willing, but you still have to help them be there. 
So you do that by setting the standards and then also giving the feedback so that they know what's working, what's not working. And a huge piece of that is celebrating wins. Because if you don't pe tell people what they're doing well, they don't know what to focus on. So you want to help them focus on what's their, what they're already doing well, that they can do more of it. So that's really important. So that's the feedback part. It also means there's really no room in your company for excuses, for stories. That means you have to be sure that in all your planning and all your setting of expectations that you have a way to measure success because we want to rely on data and not drama. And when you have a team of eight players, they expect when you bring them feedback that you can back it up with data. So make sure that you are measurable in your company with everything that you do. Um, anything else? Let's see. Well, I mean, basically, when you've set it up like that, you hired the A players, you made sure that you have A players on your team that's there already, and then you're going to be that A plus leader. That's going to be amazing. Now you just have to reinforce it over and over. That means actually you're becoming the chief or mining officer. Because here's the deal. When you have that team of amazing individuals that make that, that amazing team, they won't stand for less. If you can't give them those standards, if you can't set those standards and hold them to those standards, it's not going to be a good environment for them where they feel like they can contribute, where they feel like they can have impact, where they can have influence, and they're going to leave. They're going to find a company where they can do that. So this is it on how you exponentially can raise your income, hire the right people, have the right team in, in place, be an A plus leader, and then have that culture of discipline and hold people to their standards and you'll be great. So that's much easier said than done. If you want to find out more about that, go to bulletproofstartups.com and watch our free training there. And if it fits, you can even book a call with me. But that's the most important thing you can do to really help you get this dialed in. So you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next time.